It's finally time to do a top 10 list of budget multi-tools. In this case, coming in under $50. Now, this is not all of the budget tools that I actually own, but it's more than enough to make a top 10 list of unique and functional tools that you might actually wanna consider. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we get started, let's talk about why you would wanna consider a budget multi-tool in the first place. I believe there are three primary reasons. The first one is I think very pertinent to a lot of people. You don't carry a multi-tool every day, but you've considered it. And you see the price tag on some of the more premium brands and you go, I don't know about that. So I think being able to try out a multi-tool as a daily carry is really beneficial, especially if you can get something that is relatively good and budget friendly and these are that in fact my top 10 list includes a lot of tools that are very enjoyable to use in my opinion the second reason is you're going somewhere or doing something where your tool might be damaged or stolen and this comes up more often than you would realize i get a lot of comments on my videos about lost and stolen tools and how bad it hurts when they lose something like a surge which costs 150 you can get something a lot cheaper and potentially it won't walk away on you in the first place, but if it does, at least it's much more replaceable. And then the third reason, which I think applies to a lot of people, is that if you want duplicates or backups, or just a tool to put in multiple locations, which is really what I use them for in a lot of cases. I have them in go kits, I have them in vehicles, and I also give them as gifts so that others can have tools on them, on a regular basis. So I highly recommend checking them out for these reasons. Let's go ahead and get to the top 10 list. Now there are a lot of sub $50 multi-tools that I didn't get a chance to include in this top 10 list. However, I did make a shopping list down below and I will continue to update it as new tools come out as well. So regardless of when you watch this, you should be able to find not only these top 10, but also a bunch more. So number 10 is the Irwin Vice Grip multi-tool. So there's actually two varieties of this. There's one with a long nose and there's one like this, which I prefer a little bit more. Now this has, as you'd expect, a six inch vice grip. It's literally or five WR. So it's a five inch vice grip, but it actually ends up being about six inches. And it's exactly what you think it is. It's an Irwin vice grip just with benefits. So it has a locking one handable blade, not super high quality as you'd expect, but it's mostly there for opening packages on the fly, and it does that very, very well. And then on the inside, we have a ball detent bit driver, so flathead and Phillips, and this will also take ball detent bits from something like a Klein driver. All of those will function perfectly in here, and actually many of the tools on this list use the same form of retention. The cool thing about this is that you can find drivers and replacement bits in most Home Depots as well as Lowe's, and that is a great thing. So the Irwin Vice Grip, it's, <laughs> it's borderline not real. It's more of a dedicated tool than it is a multi-tool, but I think absolutely qualifies for this. And being under $20 most of the time, well, that's pretty damn awesome. Definitely worth checking out if you want something for a toolkit that kind of combines a lot of features all in one. Next is the Roxon Flash or the S803. So this is a one handable blade with five CR blade steel. It has really good ergonomics with a pocket clip. It has contoured handles. It also has the ability, and this is something I wish more tools have, the ability to deploy the outer implements without having to use nail nicks. So really, really appreciate it here. You simply select the tool you want. All, I, all of this I can do one-handed. And then to disengage, you simply press the lock backwards and then close it. I've done an independent review of most of the tools you've seen and will see on this list. And uh, this one really impressed me. In addition to it, we have a saw on the other side, which also has a liner lock. And we have this piece of plastic here, which hides both a whistle and a ferro serum rod. So kind of a nice little approach here to an outdoorsman's tool. I really do like this one quite a bit. And then the last thing, of course, is a pair of spring-loaded pliers with replaceable wire cutters. Very, very nice 
iteration and definitely something to consider at a very nice price point. The Byberry 22-in-1. So you probably have seen this not only from this company, but from many others. Now this is going to be part of a series of tools we're going to cover that have multiple versions, meaning that they're made by different distributors, as it were, but OEM by the same location. So the quality should be very, very similar across the board. I prefer buying from Byberry because I know their customer service experience is a little bit better and you can buy it on Amazon. So we have this right here and uh, it's a pretty cool tool set. So it's inspired by a lot of different tools like the Leatherman Signal, like the Leatherman Wave, uh, yet is different from both. So we have, of course, an outside accessible saw, which you can pull out right here. Very, very, very aggressive teeth. You have a combination blade, which is not my favorite, but still is quite good. This is in 7CR series stainless. You have a scissor on the outside as well. And then the last thing, which I think is quite cool, is a diamond file. Now this is in the same location that the serrated blade usually is, and I really, really enjoy this combination of tools. Very, very, very good. Um, so outside accessible tools are excellent. You have, once again, a whistle and ferroserum rod that you can pull out quite easily. On the inside, we have a pair of pliers with replaceable wire cutters, and we have tool set that really makes a lot of sense for mostly outdoor use. So inside we have a reamer awl, we have a large flathead, small flathead, and can opener, bottle opener combo with wire stripper. So pretty cool tool set, definitely something I would consider, but mostly this is specific to a more outdoors use. So just keep that in mind. There are also other versions, like I said, made by different companies. And I found recently one made by Mossy Oak in black. I just wanna caution people though, this is not a DLC coating that is gonna necessarily stay on. So if you're using this for food prep, I highly recommend going with a stainless version versus the black. Kinda cool, don't get me wrong. I really, really like the way this thing looks, but generally speaking, I think you're better off going with stainless for pretty much any tool on this list. Now the Roxxon Phantom isn't just a multi-tool, it's an entire system. And I gotta say, it's one of the coolest designs I have ever seen from any brand, period. So let's talk about, first of all, the tool itself. You're going to get a holster, and it's also gonna come with a set of bit kits and replaceable cutters as well. So very much appreciated that all of those are included with the Roxxon Phantom. Now, Let's talk briefly about the tool set. It comes with a Tanto blade shape that is installed. Now we'll talk about why these are here in just a minute when we get to the rest of it. You have outside accessible tools, which once again, just like the flash, can be deployed basically one-handed. You select the tool you want, which is a chisel and bottle opener, Phillips, reamer, and can opener, flathead, and, um, yeah, can opener and flathead. Now you notice that the Phillips is three dimensional at the end, which allows it to work with the bit kit. And these are four millimeter bits. These are standardized. So you'll be able to use this adapter and you can continue to adjust and add whichever ones you want. I also find that this tool is one of the most ergonomic multi-tools out there. It's very, very boxy, but very, very comfortable in hand. In addition to that, we also have a saw on the outside as well, which is properly tapered. And when we go inside, we have a pair of pliers with replaceable wire cutters. Now that's not where it ends. There's something kind of hidden here that's pretty amazing. Let me just see if I can find it. Here we go. So if I press this button, I can actually open this latch and I have one of the biggest pair of scissors, well, just ever. So this thing is insane. It has a crazy amount of utility, it has locking scissors, which I think are pretty funny. Pretty cool that they went over and above to do that. And it's just really, really interesting, but it doesn't stop there. There's more. Yeah, this is where the things get really interesting. It comes with a 5CR blade, but you can also buy in packs of three different types of add-ons. So this is just one example. We have a utility blade 
holder. That's something I wish we would see more in multi-tools. We have a clip point blade and we have a sheep's foot blade, but there's a whole bunch more that you can get access to. Saw, comb, yes, that's a comb. You have a diamond file or I think it's, yeah, diamond file and cross cut file. You have an electrician's blade. You have a serrated recurve blade. I mean, and then this big old multi-tool thing. Like there's just so many different ways to use this thing and it's very, very quick and easy to swap them out. So I highly recommend the Roxxon Phantom if you like to modify tools the way you see fit. In addition, you can actually buy small pocket knife variants that actually use the same blade system. So maybe you don't want the entire tool, but you want a knife. Well, it's pretty cool that there is an option for you that allows you to use these blades as well by themselves. I don't know how you feel, but for me, as someone who is always kind of changing things up, this is just plain, just awesome. And I cannot recommend the Roxxon Phantom enough. Now, up to this point, we haven't seen anything from one of the big companies, Saug, Gerber, Leatherman, and Victorinox. But this, this is the power leader from Saug, and it's not quite as good as its brethren, but still absolutely worth being on the list. So the tool set here, incredibly dense. It's about 4.3 ounces, so it's very, very compact, much more compact than the other tools that you'll find as well. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have a, well, a very decent sized pair of pliers. And the gear ratio compared to all the other SOG multi-tools, well, it's just way better. This particular one has a corkscrew instead of the file and serrated blade. And on the other side, it has the ability to, well, work with the corkscrew, but the, the really important part is actually this little latch. Now, let me demonstrate what makes this tool so good. If I take a hex bit, I can actually install it in the back of the plier, like you see here. And when I wanna hold it together, I can then pull this latch over, and now it's holding that bit in place. So it becomes a standard hex bit driver. So in addition to all the tools that it has, which are quite a few, it has the ability to use any standard hex bit and even better than the power pint, which is also on this list, this thing uh, really holds onto that bit without any effort or any squeeze whatsoever. So I really do enjoy that. And I think it's definitely something to consider. Maybe not for everyone because of the um, corkscrew and it is a little bit bigger than the power pint, but still absolutely worth being on this list. Now you also have a straight blade that is right here. Most of these tools are two-handed and you have a variety of different tools. Now I could go into all of this, but I've already reviewed this tool in the past and as have many others, it's a very good tool set and very, very compact. A great fifth pocket carry and works well in conjunction with carrying a folding knife. So highly recommended if you're looking for something a little bit more compact and you still want a plier-based multi-tool. And now we enter the top five. And the first one on the list is going to be the Leatherman Bolster. Now, this is something that wasn't initially on my list because the pricing of it was at $60, which if you know that it used to be 40 at Costco, felt, well, a little bit too much. And I think they agreed, which is why they dropped it down to 50. This is also going to fill the same spot in this list as the Leatherman Rev. Now the Leatherman Rev is the same price, but in my opinion, strictly worse in the sense that it doesn't offer as much. And uh, yeah, there's not much more to say. I, I just think that the bolster is gonna be a better pick at this exact same price. It also comes with a sheath, which the Rev does not. So yet another reason why you would wanna consider it. And the one-handed blade, which the Rev does not have, well, that's pretty important. This tool is only about six ounces. So it's one of the lighter tools on the list. And being that it's something that anybody can carry, it has a pocket clip included, it's a great way to introduce yourself to the world of multi-tools and carrying them every single day, either instead of a knife or for the first time, carrying something with a blade for the first time. Now you have uh, just the blade on the outside. And when you go on the inside, you have spring-loaded pliers, which are not, not that common 
from Leatherman, and I really, really like this. The Rev does not have it. It has pass cutter pliers, which I will admit are probably a little bit more durable. However, from a user standpoint, the spring-loaded pliers are absolutely fantastic. Now, on the inside, in order to get access, you simply press down here, and that deploys the nail portion so you can grab them. We have a flathead, a large, thick flathead, as well as a Phillips driver. On the other side, you have a serrated blade, you have um, file, let me push them up, serrated blade, file, and um, can opener, bottle opener combo. So the other difference here with the Rev is that this has a package opener. And frankly, I don't know if either one is something that I use basically ever. And the simple reason is I would rather just use the blade on the outside. It's just much more convenient and getting access to the package opener for something I could already be done with. It just never made any sense. So as far as the tool set is concerned, it's an okay tool set. It's not nearly the best tool set from Leatherman, but it is a good intro. It still has the 25 year warranty and it's a reasonable price and a good entry into the world of multi-tools at a very, very lightweight as well. So definitely recommend the Bolster at 50, something to consider. Now, if you've spent any time on Amazon searching for multi-tools, you've seen at least three or four iterations of what I'm about to show you. These are the Leatherman Wave clones. And well, they're very good, I have to admit. They really, really are. And the best of which I think is probably gonna be offered from Byberry. This is the 19 and one. And the price point of this is really, really good. On average, you will find this around the $30 price point. And that's very, very good for something that basically gives you similar functionality to Leatherman Wave at a small fraction of the cost. And for those who are wondering, yes, the Leatherman Wave patents have expired and now a lot of people are using the things that worked on the Leatherman and are actually going to incorporate into their own design. But there are a few improvements that they have made and I do really appreciate. The first one is that they do include the pocket clip. You don't have to buy that separately, which is nice. You have a outside accessible saw with a little bit bigger teeth that can be good or bad, depending on how you look at it. There is a diamond file with a cross cut on the back. There is a straight blade. This is in 7CR 18 MOV, I believe, as is the serrated blade as well. Now on the inside, now I have an older version this plier does not have replaceable cutters. And if I'm being honest, I actually prefer this because without replaceable cutters, this is going to be slightly more durable than other versions. And uh, the other thing that they have done here that I really, really like is they've gotten rid of a proprietary bit driver and now all of a sudden we have something we can actually replace and find easily. This is a double-sided ball detent. Now you can find these from a variety of different manufacturers. This is just one example made by Klein Tools. All of these bits will fit perfectly inside here as well. In addition, the Byberry 2019 and one, I should say, comes with a little bit kit in the front in this little elastic pouch, which gives you a couple more options as well, which I do think is a really nice little touch that they done that other companies just, well, other versions aren't doing. So really, really nice job. I do like this one, and if you buy it now, it probably will have the replaceable cutters instead of being like this one, which I just saw they have updated. Now on the other side, we have four tools. We have an inside scissor, small and large flathead, and can opener, bottle opener combo. Same thing we saw from earlier, except instead of the reamer all, we have the scissors on the inside. And I will tell you, these scissors actually cut very, very well. Now, this is basically the same with other companies like, uh, I think this is Fleesa, and this is the black variant. But uh, like I said, don't get the black because the coatings come off, and I, unless you like it just for the looks. This one does come with replaceable cutters, however, and it's about the same price. So I still would rather go with the Byberry. And this version, which is the same basic platform, but does have a different tool set. So check this out. This one I've only been able to find on um, AliExpress, but it does have a tool set that I think is quite interesting. 
I don't know if it's actually better than the 19 in one, however. So instead of the um, diamond file, they have an outside accessible scissor and everything else is pretty much the same. And then on the inside, instead of having the scissor, we have the reamer all. So this is basically the same internal setup that you see on this side as we saw with the Byberry early on and it still has the bit driver. So basically a very similar tool set has replaceable cutters, comes with both shims and replaceable cutters, which I do like. And it's a tool that anybody can access anywhere in the world. I, I can't really argue with that. It's, it's just a very good value and will get more multi-tools in people's hands who basically could never afford a Leatherman with the export cost, which can be as much as 200 euro pretty insane so just keeping in mind that this is potentially a backup or a first timers tool and it's going to very easily simulate what it feels like to carry a leatherman wave day to day so maybe you get this and then you get the leatherman wave after as your daily carry because you really enjoyed it that's my suggestion and there's going to be more in that realm now number three might be the tool that started all of this. That's the Ozark Trail Multiforce. Now I also have a Swiss Tech on the table because these are identical. One you can get at Walmart and the other one is available on AliExpress. So whether you're in another country or you're in America, there is an option for both. Now you can buy this directly online from uh, Walmart's website or you can actually walk in. And one of the advantages is that it comes with included a five-year warranty, which basically means that if you are pushy and you have a broken tool, you can walk up to customer service and they will hand you a new one. That is basically what people have told me. They might have had to uh, make sure to be a little bit persistent, but that does give it a bit of an advantage. In addition to it, it comes with a couple of nice add-ons. So it comes with a bit extender in addition to the tool itself and a clip-on sheath. Now, I do not think this I would call a Leatherman Wave clone, but it certainly looks like it. Why is it so different? Well, on a Leatherman Wave, the outside accessible tools are on the same side as the plier. Now notice they are actually on the opposite side. And this means that there's gonna be no hand pinch. You can't accidentally pinch yourself while slipping off a nut and then slamming into your hand. I love that feature about the Ozark Trail Multiforce. This is actually a more comfortable tool than the 19-in-1 by a pretty solid margin and it has a very similar tool set. The only difference is that it doesn't have the micro screwdriver, the small flathead. And so that might matter to you. It depends, but basically everything else is the same. It does not have the replaceable cutters and if I'm being honest, as I said, I actually prefer that. If you like this, but you don't live in America, there's also the Swiss Tech. So, so it's this one with the plain finish. There's a number of different Swiss Tech tools that are similar to this, but this one is the better of the variants that I've seen so far. And it is exactly the same, except that they have included the updated scissors. So the updated scissor has a taper here, where the one on the multi-force is blunted. Now both cut pretty well, but the new one is definitely better in design. So just something to keep in mind, this is a little bit better, but the customer service, ease of access, you gotta go with the Ozark Trail multi-force in my opinion. So really, really cool, definitely a good backup and or just a good way to introduce yourself to the world of multi-tools. Once again, able to use the same bits as a Klein driver, and you can find these pretty easily basically anywhere. Now, up until very recently, this was easily number one on the list of tools under $50. And I stand by that statement. It might still be number one, but the two tools that are remaining, they're complete polar opposites from each other. This is a light and compact complementary tool to a folding knife, and it just disappears in the pocket where the other one is a su super heavy duty version. So potentially they can both be number one at the same time. The SOG PowerPint. SOG PowerPint is probably the only SOG that I've consistently carried with any regularity. And it has a surprisingly good and tool dense uh, setup. 
like it really, really does. So it has two different blades, serrated and straight. It has scissors, a file, and my particular file on this black one is actually quite good. It has a pull cutter, a small flathead, a reamer awl, a bottle opener, a can opener, a Phillips. It's just a very impressive complement for something that's only 4.3 ounces. And I think what impresses me the most is just the size of the pliers. I mean, these are pretty substantial pliers for something so small. I wish that SOG would learn from this and start making more of their, com their compound leverage systems have the same gear ratio as well. You can actually open it up one-handed because of the changes in gear ratio. Where they're larger tools, you have to like really get it all the way out just to, to make the same distance that this can do well very easily. So I, I can't say enough. I mean, the power pint, I'm not even a SOG fan and the power pint is just a fantastic tool. And what's neat about this is you can buy it easily, both in the USA and outside of the USA. You probably have gone to AliExpress if you've looked for a power pint and seen these and wondered, are they clones? Are they fakes? Are they counterfeits? No, 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 they're the real thing, except that they are seconds, right? They're ones that didn't quite pass the quality control test. So you can, can potentially get one of these for like less than $30. Now they, they are here in the US still at a very good price, but the fact that you can access them pretty much anywhere is fantastic. Now I think what is the icing on the cake here is it does have the ability to hold a full sized quarter inch bit. Now with the power pint, you don't have the latch that closes, but you make up for it by being a much slimmer profile. And I still think that this is, ends up being the better of the two tools by a pretty big margin. So highly recommend the PowerPoint under 50 bucks. It's the compact tool of choice right now. There really isn't much on the market that actually competes with this tool. And for that reason, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. It's not even really a supplement. Like there really isn't anything that is better than it for its size. That says something. Even if you were to spend more, you might not be able to find anything better. And then there was one, and this is what I think is the number one tool under $50 right now. Now, you probably have already seen a review of this, but if not, this is in fact a Leatherman Surge clone, much larger than the past tools we've taken a look at, but still a little bit lighter than the actual Surge itself. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have the same or similar capability with a T-shank holder on the outside with a diamond file and cross cut with another uh, surface as well for cutting. And uh, just a little bit of a difference here, this will not take the Leatherman Surge kit, but it will use pretty much any other T-shank um, system. So that's something of note. On the other side, we have the scissor, which honestly perform insanely well. I have a full video on this tool that I will link um, down below in the description. We have a 7CR blade and a 7CR serrated blade as well. When we go to the inside, yeah, those pliers look really familiar, don't they? Yeah, they didn't delve very far from the original. And honestly, that's probably a good thing because the original pliers are quite awesome on the Leatherman Surge. And uh, yeah, I, I have not much to complain about with these pliers. They came incredibly smooth out of the box, both iterations. I bought both myself and um, very, very comfortable and easy to use. On the inside, we have a very, well, very similar setup than what we've seen before in the Surge, which is a small flathead, a large flathead, a reamer all, and a can opener, bottle opener combo with the wire stripper. On the other side, we have a full-sized quarter inch ball detent bit. And this is where it has a significant advantage over something like the Surge right now, especially because you can't get all of the Leatherman bits. They're still not fully available and they haven't been for months actually. So being that this is something you can easily access with something like a Klein driver, the security driver they have, the 27 in one is also a really good complement to this system. It's really hard to argue that this isn't one of the better tools that you can buy multiples of and distribute among your vehicles, your bags and so on. If I were to do the same thing with the surge, it would cost me maybe a thousand dollars when I'm all said and done, where this 
with $50 or 40, 40 is what I paid for this, I can really get the job done without spending too much money. And I could feel pretty confident for the usages that I'm gonna have, it'll work. Honestly, I've been pretty impressed and I've been paying attention to comments for this video that I made, as well as also all the comments on Amazon. And in general, people have been pretty pleased with the thing. And uh, it's, it's kind of hard to argue that this isn't a very compelling package for the price point. If you go on AliExpress, you can buy this one, which is the DL30 from DAI Camping, and it is exactly the same. And it runs around $37 to $40, depending. And you can buy this no matter where you are anywhere in the world. That's pretty cool. So I think that this definitely is number one, but as you can see, there's a significant difference in size between these two. Uh, they really are polar opposites. And for that reason, I think that actually makes it better because they're not going to fulfill the same role and there might be reasons why you would choose one over the other or any of the other tools that I've shown thus far. And here they are, my 10 tools that you should consider under $50. Did I miss any that you think I should have considered? I have a number of different tools that will be included in the full list down in the description. And if I find anything else or something new comes out, I will be continuing to add to it. Now this video is actually part of a series of videos where we cover different categories of EDC gear. And if you want to see the others, there's a playlist right over here. As always, thank you for your time and we'll talk again soon.